Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we are here looking at the T16 Gen 1. Now, the T16 Gen 1 is more or less the same machine as the P16S Gen 1, just with a few different configurations on the inside. But this marks the return of the 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, which means that you can actually fit a taller screen in the same size package. Before I get too carried away, this machine was provided to me as part of my participation in the Lenovo Insiders program. So while this machine was given to me for about 60 days to review, my opinions remain objective and of course remain my own. I'm not receiving any financial compensation and the machine is on loan. So released in February of 2022, this was replacing the T15 as we move to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It does have an Intel and AMD variant, and this one, of course, is the Intel variant. It came in two colors, black and storm gray. The storm gray has an integrated GPU only and a backlit keyboard only. It does not have the non-backlit option. There are a few other options that are listed in the PS ref, which I will link in the description down below for your review. So let's dive right into some specifications here. We do have a 16 inch 16 by 10 panel, which means that we are looking at 1920 by 1200. The panels themselves start with a 300 nit, 800 to 1, 45% uh, percent color accuracy. Then they move up to a touch panel and then a 400 nit 1001, 1000 to 1 contrast ratio with 100% sRGB. And you can also get it in a touch panel with privacy guard, 500 nit display as well. And then lastly, we have a 2560 by 1600, 400 nit panel, 1200 to 1 contrast ratio and 100% sRGB. Now, I'll just be covering the Intel variant here in terms of CPUs, but we do have four different i5s and five different i7s that I'll put up on the screen here. These are 12th generation Intel, which means that we are dealing with P-Core and E-Core. So if you don't know anything about that, I will link an article in the description down below where you can kind of bring, uh, bring yourself up to speed. They are running Intel Iris Xe graphics, which is capable of DirectX 12 and there is an optional NVIDIA GeForce MX550, which is a two gigabyte dedicated card. RAM is eight or 16 gigabyte solder DDR4 3200 megahertz with one slot. So you have a maximum of either 40 or 48 gigabytes. The drive on the inside is a 2280 NVMe SSD and it is PCIe 4x4. Internal batteries are either a 52 or 86 watt hour. There are several different chargers that come with the machine as well. A couple of other options to talk about, of course, is the camera up top. So you can either get no camera at all, a 720p with privacy shutter, a 1080p with privacy shutter, which to me is the gold standard. And then of course, FHD plus IR, which this one is with the privacy shutter. Keyboard backlit is optional, so make sure that you are checking the actual pictogram to see if it's included. The only time you don't need to worry about that is if you're buying the Storm Gray version, which comes with it by default. Bluetooth 5.1 is standard, whereas NFC, eSIM, Nano SIM, Smart Card, and Fingerprint Power On are all options. And of course, this one does have the Fingerprint Power On, which is very handy. Doing a quick tour of the ports, on the right-hand side, we have the Kensington Lock slot and a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1. Along the back, we have the nano SIM card slot. And on the left-hand side, we have the Ethernet port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1, HDMI 2.1, and a headphone microphone combo jack. All right, now that we have this thing turned over, let's go ahead and do some disassembly. And the only thing that we'll need, of course, is a Phillips screwdriver, which I happen to have right here. All right, here we go taking a look on the inside. So the first thing that we'll notice here is the battery, which is the 86 watt hour variant. And we do have a little bit of space over here where our smart card uh, reader assembly would go. 
And then we also have an assembly over here, which apparently is um, vacant at the moment and is being used to uh, exhaust air from the bottom uh, out through the side. And that is a sizable cooler uh, for this laptop. Um, that's really, really good to see. We have a uh, small daughter board over here for this USB type A port. And then underneath of that, we have a, another uh, smaller board uh, for the fingerprint reader power button. So that's independent of the main board. And then over here, we have our much larger board uh, that contains all of the other components. We uh, see the place where WAN card would go and taking a look, I think the wireless card is probably integrated and mounted. Oh, no, never mind. It is integrated. It's right over here. You can see the antennas uh, connecting it, covered with that sticker. We also have our RAM slot, and this one is occupied uh, by an 8 gigabyte stick. And then, of course, we have our 2280 NVMe over here. So, overall, uh, very straightforward in terms of the interior components of the machine. And just an aside, if you are looking for keyboard removal, it only involves the spinning out of this screw here and this screw here. The keyboard simply just needs to be moved in an upward direction, like the old school ones, and then you'll see all the tabs uh, reveal themselves. The keyboard is lifted and then flexed out of place, and we fold it forward. And here are, are the two ribbon cables exposed and ready to go. There is nothing else here except for the roll cage. And then reassembly, of course, is the opposite of removal. And thankfully, this keyboard is trivially easy to replace. So with that being said, let's go ahead and reassemble this and see what we get for some boot times. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and open this up, power it on. It is worth pointing out that I do not have my personal account set up on this, so the fingerprint reader will not function as an automatic login button. So despite it wanting to uh, perform some updates, we still have a respectable boot time. And this is a fully fledged, fully sized business machine. There is no question about that. From the generously sized trackpad, to the full numpad, to the iconic ThinkPad keyboard, which again, very easy to replace, two screws and you wiggle it out, you're good to go. There is a lot to like. We do have a, a very visible, very strong roll cage. We have the use of magnesium all over the device, carbon fiber on the lid. This thing feels durable even for its larger size. And I would be pretty confident if I was a large machine user carrying this around and doing any sort of work that I needed to complete from it. One thing that I find particularly interesting is that you can get this, of course, with the dedicated GPU which might mean that it could actually handle a handful of games while you were, uh, you know, enjoying a bit of downtime. Overall, very impressed. I, uh, you know, thanks to Lenovo for sending this out uh, for me to test. I will admit that large machines like this are not necessarily my cup of tea, but it was really cool to take a look at the transition back to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio that was left behind when 16 by 9 became uh, rather famous. If you have any questions uh, or comments about this machine, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I will read them as I get to them. And I'll answer any questions, of course, that I'm able to based on the time that I've spent with this machine. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're looking to support the channel, I'll leave some stuff over here uh, that you can do to help uh, support my journey. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.